So our next performer hails all the way from Missouri. She spends her days uh, teaching children about male fragility and feminism through the wonders of arts and crafts. She's a grandpa in training, and she's about to bring to the stage some of her amazing Midwest humor. Please welcome Katie Pyatt. <laughs> yesterday Woo! it was kind of funny because there were so many of, of us there like people were talking like I heard in rumors from the front that we're not moving because there's so many of us I don't know I thought that was funny but um <laughs> so you guys I I heard that they're changing part of the lyrics to America the beautiful to amber waves of shame <laughs> am I right I mean maybe that's just the alternative version um, thank you. Um, but no, really, um, I figured out why Trump uses Twitter so much. I got it. I figured it out, you guys. I mean, he is a giant man-child, yes. But he uses Twitter so much, so that way his mouth is free to fillet Putin better. Right? So, like, instead of hands-free, it's mouth-free. Like, I got a good one, right? Right? So... Speaking of things that are horrible and shouldn't exist, let's talk about gender reveal parties for a second. Yeah. <laughs> who, who knows what a, a, just clap right now if you know what a gender reveal party is. Okay, cool. I've actually met some people that don't know and you're so lucky. I'm from Missouri, the Bible Belt, so I've seen a lot of them. Uh, a gender reveal party, let me just catch you up on this blast from the recent past or the McCarthy era or whatever. <laughs> Circle the wagons, let's talk about it. So. A gender reveal party is where there's literally no presence and a group of adults gather to celebrate the genitals of an unborn child. It kind of sounds like something out of Caligula or something that Hedonist Bot would do. Um, like people will use cannons that spray out like dust or like they'll open a box and like release balloons or they'll have cakes at these parties and it'll either have blue for boy or pink for girl inside of it because those are the only choices, I guess. Um, and like, let's just talk about these cakes for a second. So Google image search and my friends from back home's Facebooks tell me <laughs> that these cakes say things like rifles or ruffles. Lures or lace. <laughs> Tractors or tiaras. <laughs> and like, all that really tells me about your family is that you hate when femme people use farming equipment. <laughs> right? Right? And like, Tractors and tiaras, is that a new TLC show? Because I'd watch it. But I'd be stoned as fuck. I'd probably like get like chicken and a biscuit crackers and eat them with like spray cheese on there. Which actually that's probably like something that's being served at a gender reveal party back home, right? Shout out to my hometown. Um, but let's just talk about these cakes again for a second. So sometimes when people are revealing or whatever, they'll put M&Ms inside the cake. Once again, blue for penis, pink for vagina, because those are the only choices. And uh, when you cut open the cake, the M&Ms fall out and reveal like, oh great, my child's gonna make 78 cents to the dollar. Yes! <laughs> and it's like, if, the, con if the, the concept of gender is a construct and the grossness of people celebrating unborn children's genitals doesn't get you, um, M&M's inside of a cake means less cake. <laughs> and like, if I'm about anything, it's gender fluidity and plenty of cake. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? Like, I think if you're gonna reveal anything about a baby, it would be like if you're gonna have like a lizard baby. <laughs> like, you invite your whole family to the party and maybe like cut open the cake and like live lizards come out of it. <laughs> and like, hopefully then you prepare a speech about like how you got to be pregnant with a lizard baby. <laughs> and then, 
you, you know, the color of everything would probably be green then and not pink or blue. I don't know, that's just what I think. But, uh, so I'm gonna talk about something that we're not talking about right now, and um, it's that I'm a beautiful fat woman. <laughs> right, right? I don't like to say beautiful and fat all the time because I don't like to be repetitive. <laughs> but, right? I'm a beautiful fat woman, and like, I'm really lucky because like not only am I just like this fat fox, but my body is like a tool to help point out tacky people. Right, like those people in life that think that women come in two sizes, pregnant and not pregnant. Right, like one time I was in a store in downtown Portland and it was one of those like handmade dresses store and I was looking for a dress, because I was in a dress store. And um, of course they were very lacking and extra large the size. It's like, you know, finding a gem in the store. And I found this really cute dress and I, so I took it into the dressing room and there was this really cool poster that had like all the body size, you know, all like the body shapes on it. And um, my body shape, just in case, if you're shaped like me, we're not just, not a, we're not just fat, we're apple shaped. And like there was actually an apple shaped woman on the poster, which is usually the size that is omitted because people don't want to talk about women that just have bellies and no tits. I don't know why, but um, so I, came, I tried on the dress, it looked super foxy. I came out, I was gonna buy the dress and the owner of the store was this very pregnant woman. And um, I was like, hey, you know, I really loved that poster you had on in the dressing room uh, because like it has apple shapes on there and I'm apple shaped and I went through the whole thing like that's never on a poster. And she like looked down at her baby and like looked at me and she was like, yeah, totally like I'm apple shaped and then winked at me like there was a secret club. <laughs> yeah, there's no secret club of fat ladies and if there was, you wouldn't. You wouldn't be in it. Like, am I expecting, yeah, lunch to be delicious? <laughs> right? So then I, I bought the dress in complete silence and left. And now I'm telling this story about her, so that's what she gets. Um, another time, I was uh, working the Japanese garden gift store. That was like my job for a summer. And this woman was like, hey, um, are you expecting? And I was like, no. And she was like, oh my gosh, I never let myself ask that. And I was like, well, you did today, didn't you? <laughs> and like, you guys, I think instead of being embarrassed, if somebody asks you if you're pregnant, just throw it in their face. Like, I just looked at her, I was like, nope, just fat, fat power, right? And she looked so mortified. <laughs> And then later, all the cashiers are busy, so she had to check out with me. <laughs> right? Right? And so, to end my set, I would just like to gender reveal what I had for lunch. <laughs> it was a transgender, lesbian, polyamorous, Cubano sandwich. <laughs> Thank you so much, I'm Katie Pyatt. <laughs>